Hi, my name is Jackson Nash, 3D artist and animator at New World Designs. And today, I'm going to try and explain how we got from this to this. Let's start with something that you're likely to have heard about before, motion capture. Motion capture, or performance capture, is a term that was made popular through the creation of the fantasy trilogy The Lord of the Rings, directed by Peter Jackson in the early 2000s. Peter Jackson's own special effects company, Weta Digital, decided to use what was at the time the relatively new technique in order to accurately capture and animate the movements of actor Andy Serkis. Over the last two decades, this method has been refined and implemented by placing dots all over the actor's face and body. These dots could then be tracked in 3D space and used to transfer movements and expressions, turning them into a virtual, well, avatar. Which was, of course, the 2009 James Cameron film, which many would still consider to be a flawless example of this technique. Motion capture is great for transferring the movements of an actor onto a model or creature that has been created from the ground up by a team of talented animators and designers. These early experiments in motion capture here at New World Designs show just how effective this can be. I am a mix of many things I can't quite be defined. Not the same, specifically, as anyone you'll find. It's not that I am something special in comparison to you, because you are also a mix of things that make up you. What if Instead of transferring the actor's expressions onto some new fantasy character, you wanted to perfectly capture the actor's face and place them in the CG environment. Well, it would take a team of artists weeks to try and accurately model every blemish, every wrinkle, every perfect contour of the human face. So, what if you could just scan it? Welcome to the world of photogrammetry. An incredible process that allows us to scan objects and transfer those scans directly into a virtual environment. This technique is often used by architectural and geological surveyors to capture an accurate model of, say, a new building development or an eroding hillside, but can in fact be done by anyone at home with a camera. The concept is very simple. Look at two photos that were taken side by side. See how different parts of the subject wiggle back and forth. Well, by identifying matching points and seeing how much they move between photos, photogrammetry software can calculate where exactly that point must have existed in 3D space. Once millions of these points have been drawn, they can be connected, just like a join the dots puzzle, and the resulting triangle mesh is then filled in to create an accurate representation of the original object. We're using this technique as we speak downstairs in our office to study the structure of the building that we just bought so we can turn it into our new studio. So expect some cool animations in the future. This is easily done with static objects, but it presents a problem when it comes to capturing human subjects. If the object moves at all during the scanning process, then the computer will misinterpret this movement as a change in 3D space and the scan will be ruined. So how can we take hundreds of images all at once? Well, some kind of camera rig of course. Being a bullet time company, we already have the bespoke software and hardware 
set up to capture hundreds of images simultaneously. Meaning frozen moments in time can be scanned and then turned into 3D models, a method that we experimented with behind the scenes of the Cube, the game show, where we created a 100% CGI shot that allowed us to move a virtual camera through the glass of the cube and up into the studio ceiling, a move that would have been impossible otherwise. But this doesn't solve all our problems. Photogrammetry scans, after all, are still just objects. They don't move. You can rig and animate them, but then you're back to the problem of capturing movement. And we don't want to translate the movements of just a few dots. We want to really capture the expressions of the subject, wrinkle by wrinkle, pore by pore down to the very smallest twitch of muscle. So, these cameras can technically record video. If we could get each camera to record simultaneously and then remove the first frame from each of those videos, then you would have a 3D scan of the first frame. Doing the same thing for the second frame of all of these videos gives you a 3D scan of the same person one fraction of a second later. Do this a few hundred times and you have a few hundred frames that can be played back just like you would a flipbook. Only this is a flipbook containing hundreds of 3D pages played in sequence. This is often called volumetric video or 4D video. Now, of course, it's still not that simple. The video quality on these Canons is vastly inferior to their photo quality. We normally use the 6K raw photos in our photogrammetry and our bullet time. And the drop in detail down to 1080p is noticeable in that there are now fewer points to identify in order to draw our lines between them. Enter the Blackmagic 12K cinema camera. The highest resolution video camera that money can buy. These beauties can shoot uncompressed 12K footage at 60 frames a second. That's 12,288 by 6,840. 80 megapixels for every frame of video. That is 80 times the 720p resolution that these cameras can achieve at 60 frames a second. And we have three. And yet there are more hurdles. My little ear has been cut off. I think it's just gonna be too obvious. I have decided to start again. Tom and Ian have gone to get some uh, wasp nest killing spray, which means I get to tinker with this without anyone disturbing me. Gorgeous. After another morning of tinkering, this is the volumetric rig version 10, 10.1, 10.15, 10 I don't know. But the important thing is, this is the best one yet. Three Blackmagic 12Ks, a nice round dozen of these little guys, three ridiculously bright LED panels, as well as a ring light and this little guy to light up my chin. All that's left to do now is turn this boyish face into the perfect volumetric capture surface. The model is scanned, meshed, consistently reconstructed, frame by frame. Then I can start the process of replacing the eyes, teeth, tongue, every hair follicle, and even refining the shape and texture of the skin in order to create a normal map that changes based on the tension and compression of each area of the face. 
A normal map is simply a way of taking the micro details of the skin, the way they receive and cast light and shadow, and turning these elements into simple instructions that can be reproduced perfectly without the need for each wrinkle to be reconstructed in 3D space. What's beautiful about that is that when it's finished, you have a perfect capture of the actor's expressions. But you also have the ability to totally change anything you want about that performance. Whether you want to gently tweak the way a person smiles when they say, I love you, or furrow their brow when they should seem concerned, you can even dilate or constrict their pupils. You can make someone's face melt, put scarab beetles under their skin, or turn them into a werewolf, all while maintaining the basis of the performance. The clips that we have edited together are just a few examples of what can be done once a performance is captured, all rendered on our Office PC over just a few days. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to New World. To New World. New World Designs. 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 A low-res fluid simulation of the head emerging from a tank of oily liquid was baked in just a couple of hours using one of our more powerful PCs, carefully dialing in the translucency and reflectiveness of the liquid to give it that strange, goopy look. I recently rewatched The Matrix and found myself thinking about how I could recreate the mirror effect that is used when Neo leaves The Matrix for the first time. A simple noise texture combined with an animated gradient controlling the mix of the original texture and the mirrored texture separated by a bump map to give the illusion of the metal being a 3D layer and not a flat shape with a very subtle roughness map to create some almost imperceptible imperfections on the surface of the metal. A spotlight is given a procedural noise texture that simulates the caustics in sunlight hitting the bottom of a pool underwater, removing gravity from the scene and adding a turbulent force to the world to dictate the outcome of the hair and cloth simulation gives the effect of being underwater without having to get water involved at all. This scene is in fact one of the more simple to set up as it is literally the same animation with a light and a box behind me. Blue skin, re-sculpted head, re-coloured eyes, and an arrow up my side. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! <laughs> the mesh can be seamlessly transitioned between my original face and the new sculpt while keeping the underlying movements and animation intact, as it is saved as a relative shape key. Megalophobia is the fear of things that are unnervingly large, adding an ocean complete with simulated reflections and foam, as well as a couple of ships and clouds for scale, the cherry on top is the tiny seagull simulation. These clouds are just pictures, so please don't look at them too closely. Make it green, add a fur simulation, it's that simple. Okay, well, it's not that simple, but I'm not gonna bore you with the details. Who cares, it's fuzzy, look at it. Ah, I, I love this one. For this shot, I got a tiny bit carried away and modeled an entire X-Wing in one evening, stuck it inside a virtual toilet roll tube full of stars, and then remembered that the shot doesn't include any of that extra detail, but it's good to know it's there, you know, it, it still makes a difference. Sparks, cables, and flashing lights distract from the fact that this is a very minimal setting. This also doubles as my audition tape for J.J. Abrams' next project. So there we go. Pretty exciting, right? I certainly think so. We've established these techniques and now there is no limit to what we can recreate. The next step for us will be to combine these with full body motion capture data to place the facial expressions onto a full body performance and then incorporate this footage into augmented and extended reality applications. So watch this space. Woo.